Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Irish Art Show broadcast from the Scientology Community Centre. Tonight we are thrilled to launch a series of various shows exploring the life and art of local artists. My guest tonight is Rachel McDermott who's going to share with us her journey to becoming an accomplished painter and what it means to her. Hi Rachel. Hi Angel. Thanks Hi, how for are having you? me here. You're so welcome to the Art, Art Show here this evening. Thank you. Um, we're delighted to have you. Thank you. Looking forward to interviewing you and hearing your story. A very interesting story, I might add. Mm -hmm. An inspiring story. Um, but we'll start off with your family. So your family, you came from a family of creatives, writers, singers and designers. So I actually think it was inevitable for you to, to end up painting and be, and be as talented as them. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, my, my artist was, was not a dirty word in our house. Um, there was my, you know, I've, I've a lot of family members. I've designers. Uh, my, my cousin had a shop in Paris Court Town Centre, mm -hmm. um, Jodie Knits, it was called, and she designed all her, all her own knitwear. Um, I have a cousin, another cousin who is a, a journalist she she was the journalist for Hot Press over in New York in the 1980s, early 90s, um, and she was also a journal for the UN in uh, yeah. North Africa in in Atreya. So there was a lot of there was a lot of creative people in my family growing up. So I was surround I was surrounded with it. You know, I, I wasn't very academically minded um, in school, but I was I, I, I enjoyed creativity. Um, yeah. And did you know that, the, you know, your family were more creative than, say, the average family? Or did you just think it was normal? I thought it was normal. Yeah. You know, if I went into my, my uh, family members' houses, there would be their own artwork on mm. the walls and, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it was, just, it was just part of life. You know, just part of life. Sign writing, another aunt did. It was just part, yeah, it was part of our family. Yeah. And actually, then you, you you studied to become a, a support worker for children with learning difficulties. Yeah, was that I, always something you wanted to do, or did you just fall into it? It was definitely something I wanted to do. Um, I I initially left school and uh, lived in London for a few years. I was doing uh, sectarial and business work um, in an interior design company. Um, I enjoy, I did enjoy it, but I, I when I came back to Dublin in about ninety two ninety three I realized you know i wanted to work with people with uh, uh autism and and mm -hmm. stuff like that a, a teacher in my school when primary school read out stories about an autistic little boy something clicked inside me and it was something that i was fascinated with um academically wise i wasn't great so i i actually did ended up doing a force course and working in a local center for for children with learning disabilities and that's how i started started there about 30 years ago and i'm still there in the same company so you're still in the same place i'm still in the same place Isn't that incredible? You know, yeah i've worked with adults children i've worked in daycare in um houses um it's just been a very wide and very varied career within that sector and I've really, really enjoyed it. That is some journey, isn't it? Yeah, I loved it. And all the learning curves that you've learned over the years. Yes. Meeting yes. different people and different experiences, incredible. Absolutely. I've been privileged to work with people with learning disabilities. Yeah. I really They're have. They're privileged to have you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, and around, around the time you rekindled a, was it a childhood romance? It was wasn't a childhood it? romance, yeah, a with my husband. Yeah, 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 a childhood romance with your new husband, Mal. Tell us a little bit about, about that, actually. Uh, we met when we were about 12 or 13. Oh, wow. He used to play kiss chasing around the local <laughs> <Kiss> church. <chasing. laughs> around the local church. Um, 
and throughout the years we we'd always see each other you know and there'd be a little twinkle in our eyes and stuff like that but we had our, we went our separate ways you know mm -hmm. in 20s and then we hooked up again in our 30s and um we got married uh, mm -hmm. and started from there yeah yeah yeah, wow, that's amazing. just such yeah. a, I mean, I love the kiss chasing story. Yeah. <laughs> are you still kiss chasing? Uh, we are, he is, yeah, he's still chasing me. <laughs> and, and on a more serious note, actually, um, not long after that, you had your beautiful, precious Katie. Yeah. Your beautiful daughter. Yeah, much long for yeah, child. Yeah, much long and for child. Yeah, it was, a, it was just like, for me, it was a dream come true. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed my pregnancy. Yeah. Um, had a very had a good good enough pregnancy. They were a little bit worried um, towards the end. Just they would they induced me in the end, and I had Kate a little bit early. Um, and unfortunately, when she was born, she was born with immune problems, um, and that journey took us from from her birth. Um, she, she we were brought over to Newcastle in England. They had a, an immune kind of a ward over there called the Bubble Unit, and we packed up our stuff over here. We arrived over in Newcastle. The army brought us over because Kate was extremely sick and Newcastle was the only place that they could, you know, keep her, get her stable and stuff. So we actually ended up um, there for a year and a half. We were living in hospital accommodation um, in Newcastle and Kate was in a bubble unit and we'd go over every morning, early in the morning, and we'd leave last thing at night. We'd go into her, and we were that was our that was our life for a year and a half with her. Um, Did she ever get a chance to be at home? She got it. She was in and out of hospital, Crumlin Hospital, for for the first say year year and a half of her life. Mm -hmm. um, but there was always infections and stuff like that. We were trained up. Mal was trained up. Um, my husband Malcolm, he was trained up to take bloods, and we used to put her up on a peg feed, and she had a central line as well. So it was very complex. But in order to get her home and do all that stuff herself, we had to do a lot of training in Crumlin Hospital with nurse mm -hmm. specialist, and and that was the way that we wanted it. We didn't want her in hospital. You know, a lot of parents opt for staying in hospital, but we 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 got her home an awful lot. But she initially she had a lot of infections and stuff, which always brought her back into hospital. So yeah. it was in and out, in and out, and work was great. They 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 really really supported me. I reduced my hours, and you know I could work around them. They were absolutely fantastic. Um, Shiverstown House in in Temple Oak, they were absolutely fantastic. And what happened when you got to Newcastle? Um, she had a she had a stem cell transplant, um, which meant she was isolated for a long time. Could you see her then? Obviously not. Oh yeah, oh, we were could, we were we were counted as staff. Yes. You know, we would be the ones who would scrub up every morning, mm -hmm. and we'd go into the bubble, and we couldn't we couldn't leave until you know un unless we, we we did the whole process again of scrubbing up before we'd go back into her again. So a lot of the medications were just passed to to us. Uh, to save on the nurses getting having to do the full scrub up. Yeah. So we were heavily involved in 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 you know keeping her alive ourselves, the two of us. And when did they? When did you know that it was no longer an option? Um, keeping her alive. She she was on so many medications that she there wasn't enough hours in the day to get those medications into her. And yes she just started her organ started failing and we were lucky as well because the army came back and uh, flew us back to Crumlin Hospital and so that she could pass away back in, in Dublin rather yeah. than in you know in another country so you know we were blessed blessed with that so we brought her home and family were around us and you know we had we had the support that that we needed at the time you know which was fantastic you know it was it's harrowing harrowing but you know we were we, we were together on it you and know all it was, people a, it was a decision you. yeah you know? it was a decision that we had to make yes. that was you know as far as I'm concerned the hardest decision yes absolutely. I've ever had to make you Can't know and imagine. ever will have to make yeah you know I don't think there could be anything worse than that you know? no absolutely mm. not um and it then brought you to obviously, understandably, depths of grief Absolutely, and just yeah. almost like destruction and um, yeah, heaviness in your yeah, lives. Yeah, it was just it was the loss. A time, when I look back now, it was just a time of total and utter despair. Isn't it? It's just the shock, yeah. the numbness. Yeah, um, we used we used um, alcohol a lot to mm -hmm. to numb the pain. Um, was that in it like? Did it take long for you to kind of start using the alcohol well, as, as we a had, mom? 
when when we were over in Newcastle and we'd left, we'd leave the hospital, we'd have we'd, we'd get a bottle of wine and we'd, yeah. we'd have a bottle of wine to, to unwind and, and, and it became it became a, a habit, a really bad habit, basically. Um, and then when when Kate passed away, it just the, 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 it, it just kind of got out of control, really. It just got out of control. I was using it as as a tool to help me cope with the grief, um, not realizing that it was just making the grief worse. And you would know, it be like a bottle of night, or would it? Um, was that the way it was for you at the time? It depends on when I, whether I was working the next day or not. Yes. Like I had quite, I, I did control it very, very well. Mm. Um, you know, never got never got into trouble for being late or unkempt or anything like yeah. that. I, I was I, I I controlled it around work um, because I I knew work was the only thing that kind of I had a focus on at the time. You know, so. Um, I just knew I was using it as a, as, a, as a crutch. And did family and friends realize that, or was it just they you did, now? They did, but because you are in the height of grief, I, I think people are afraid to approach you, you know, directly. There might have been, there would have been a few kind of comments and stuff yes. like that, but I think inevitably the realization that it had got, it had started to control me and my husband as well, because mm -hmm. he, he, he was drinking as well a lot. Um, it, was, it was the two of us that kind of came to the realisation that went, oh, here, like, this is, this is not the, the, the mother that Kate would recognise. And that's what you said to me. Kate yeah. wouldn't recognise you she both. She wouldn't recognise us. And I think that was obviously nearly a sign from Kate to say, listen, guys, Absolutely. Yeah. get it together, you yes. know. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and really, you did. I mean, a lot of people could have stayed in that hole. Yeah. And I've for the rest I, of their yeah, lives absolutely. and not, not moved to try yeah, and make... Yeah, I feel really, really you know, blessed. You know, many really times blessed. we hear that, that people yeah. just, just stay stuck yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you actually went to the Rutland, you ended up in the Rutland Centre. Yeah. I which did. is right beside it's you, right isn't right beside me, staring me in the face. <laughs> that was a sign as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I had a friend who had attended the Rutland Centre a couple of years before, mm -hmm. and I'd seen the changes that she had made in her life and how how good her life had become and how enriched her life had become because she started to you know um kind of concentrate on other things besides alcohol so she kept kind of calling back to me and and she encouraged me and i one day i just said yeah i just went i've had enough i want to do something i want this you know i want to celebrate kate's life yeah. rather than mourn her her loss you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, and it's such a low vibration for you. You just you're going around numb as it is. Yeah, numb from yeah. Katie not being around without having to add alcohol on top of which is numbing you even more. Yeah, and the thing thing about it was that I got it one one morning. I was I was lying in bed and I, I hadn't got work and I had a bit of a hangover and I was reading a magazine and it was on oh, yes. an article on yes. um, Annie Sloan. Mm -hmm. um, which Annie Sloan paints. Yes. And uh, it was about upcycling furniture and stuff. And I kind of went, well, you know, to slap a bit of paint on something. And I knew I still had, I had that creative spark, if you know what I mean. Like yes. I, I had it in me, but I just had no confidence mm -hmm. in, in, in kind of my own creativity. But I found that the upcycling the furniture was a great way. There was no, there was no, um, kind of ego involved in that, like no fear of failure and stuff like that, because you're just painting, you know, chairs or something like but that. But also, it's like kind of, you know, it's taking you out of your mind because you have, you know, something to concentrate on, like painting, yeah. painting a piece of furniture, which you don't really have to think. Yes, you're exactly. just going through the motions of this gentle painting, you know. Yeah. But before we we move away from Katie, which we're not, we're, she's in her no, heart here, she's yeah. I, I, in, in the interview. I mean, um, can we just talk about this beautiful? Painting here of the of the um, the red robin, yeah. and you know we all know anybody who's lost somebody we all associate I the know. red robin with someone who we've lost. Yeah, um, tell us a little bit about that actually. Well, my dad, my dad was uh, was a big part of my life, and we used to do. He used to have you know b uh, potatoes, uh, carrots, everything in the back garden, and he'd always have a shovel out the back garden. There'd always be a little robin mm. perched on it. And when I pa when my dad passed away, he passed away when I was pregnant with Katie. Um, it was a huge loss to me. And robins just always reminded me of dad out the back garden digging up the potatoes. Yes. And I started painting birds, you know, and and robins 
robins, I suppose, for everybody really is a symbol of, of a lost loved one. Mm. You know, they're, they're just one of those little symbols that and everybody the, knows about. And they're such a beautiful bird, aren't they? Yeah. The, especially in the winter, if it's kind of like frosty, I you know, can see the yeah, red yeah. going around the garden. Yeah. It is lovely. It's the colours of the, the robins. It is. That we, it's yeah, just so and, and the different types of birds. It's gorgeous. Just it's just fantastic. I'm, I'm drawn to robins myself, I have to say. Um, can we just get on to, um, can we talk next about Anam Cara? and what they did for you yeah um i i met a, i met some absolutely amazing people in the rutland center and in recovery isn't uh, that great in though, general oh, that you were meeting like-minded people absolutely. with pain in their lives yes. who were trying to make a difference in their lives to move and and become the person they're supposed to be as well you know yeah and and people people in recovery really really want to give recovery to the next person Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So um, this the, this couple who who were in uh, that would go to meetings that I would recovery meetings that I would go to um, introduced me to Anam Cara, brought yeah. me up. They they were holding a, 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 an evening up in um, the Maldron Hotel up in Tala and um, he invited me to come along. He said it just might it might just help me, you know, and I did. I found a, an amazing support uh, from Anam Cara because I was meeting people not only was I meeting people for myself that I went with in recovery who had child loss, but other people, just ordinary, you know, normal people who were who were in the depths of despair. And it didn't. I wasn't it didn't I wasn't conscious about my grief, you know, mm -hmm. when you're when you're when you're with people who who haven't lost children and you and it's very hard to explain, you know, um, how feeling a child lost. Uh, having child loss to somebody who hasn't lost a child. You just can't explain it. Yeah. So I was with like-minded people in Anamkara and I started to get comfortable in knowing that I could grieve, but also knowing that I could live as well. You know, that, 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 that the grief didn't have to hold me back, you know, and, yeah. and that along with the journey of starting to do the upcycling, the painting, I just started to become alive again. But I do think that the healing, when you were in Rutland and meeting these people in Anamkara and all that, yeah. the, the healing also comes from knowing that there was like-minded people actually in this in a same or similar boat exactly. to you. Exactly. That it wasn't just you floating around here yeah. and, and yeah. the I, only I didn't person, feel alone. And yourself and Mal, just yeah, you yeah. didn't feel probably probably so isolated. Yes, yeah. Because grief can be so isolating and keep you, t you know, tied into that. Yeah, exactly. Whereas when you start meeting people, exactly, it just changes things. And and and, and I also think as well what you were saying about um, Anna, Anna, Annie Sloan. Yes. Yeah. Like when you saw that article, it was a flicker of light for you. It was. Yes. You know, big flicker of light that actually started. You know, obviously, your furniture upcycling yes I've seen some yeah. photographs that amazing and then obviously painting then after that so yeah I just joined a local art group the Eden Art Group in Raffarnham and um, I really mm. liked it because because a lot of the art the art uh, classes around the place you had to go to every single one mm -hmm. in a row yeah. six in a row whereas this you could kind of pick and choose because I did I did shift work with working with people with learning disabilities, I did I did shift work, so I was able to fit it around my um, my schedule, work schedule. Mm. And he also my first painting that I done. I was he, just about to ask you, what was your first yeah, painting? Yeah, it was it was a hair. It was a hair. A and, hair. Yeah, and um, uh, I called it Chance, and um, he just kind of looked at looked at me starting it, and he was I'm not. You're OK. You don't need any instruction from me. You, he could see that I had a style. I didn't know I had a style, but he could see that I had a style and he was just there to guide me, which was exactly what I needed at the time. Um, I just felt it just came naturally to me. And, you know, that was... You didn't even know that. You didn't I didn't even, even know. No, I didn't because I, I, I hadn't painted since school. I got a D in my art in my Leaving Cert. Um, uh, I was as I said before, not academically minded. So all my, my grades would have been dragged down through that. You mm. know, I was a lot more creative than, than academic. And um, he, he was just fantastic. He just, he just encouraged me to, to keep on going. And, and that's what I've been doing ever since. But I think as well, it's, it's, it's always, the, the, I, I'm, when I'm back in school, you know, it was always the right teacher that you just took to, that you just, you know, flowed yes. more with. Yes, you know? yeah, I didn't have a great, 
relationship with my art teacher. Yeah, well, that's what happens, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like and I would spend hours right. on stuff and then she'd come in and she'd just draw all over it and oh stuff like goodness. that. So I, I had no confidence in my own ability to, Imagine to be doing creative. That to your child. I know, I know. When shocking. I look back, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, so shocking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like also your painting, paintings, are they like that therapy? Oh, absolutely. Like, this is my meditation. Yeah. I get completely Switch and utterly off, lost. Com I could, I could be go in at ten in the morning and I, I, I'd suddenly go, oh my god, it's dinner time. Mm -hmm. you know, like. And I, I like I was saying to you earlier on, no matter how many classes you do or whatever. I mean, listen to me. I could class on art for the rest of my yeah, life, yeah. and I'd still be drawn stick yeah. men. So the, it just there's always. The, that yeah. you're kind of inbuilt and born with that talent. Yeah, I don't know what, like, I, I, it's a gift from Kate. It I is a gift, I absolutely know it's a gift from Kate. I just, I, it just comes out. And speaking about Kate again, um, I want you to talk about, actually, first of all, talk about your studio. Yeah. Which was Katie's bedroom. Okay, it would have been I, Katie's bedroom. I just think that's lovely that Katie's bedroom yeah. has become your creation. Absolutely. It's, and it's, Katie would love that. Yeah. That's just amazing. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a space that is that I'm extremely lucky to have. I, I am, I'm extremely lucky to have. It's, it's, it's her space, it's, it's our space. It's our space, yeah. Did you feel that you got more acceptance even by uh, utilizing the room as a different, I suppose, what be, you know, it was a bedroom and now it became a studio to change to something that, like you were still using the room rather than leaving the room empty. Yeah, like it was, it was a for me it was a blank canvas because we only moved into the apartment. Mm. We had bought the apartment, but we had only moved into the apartment after Kate died when we moved back from from Newcastle. We were homeless because we had we were renting up to then, and we had given up our our uh, rented accommodation because we were wasting our our rent because we were over in England for over two years. So mm -hmm. there was no point in keeping the that the rent place yeah. open so but we'd been back and forth um, uh, organizing to buy the apartment that we're in now so <laughs> that was going to be Kate's bedroom for her coming home for when she was going to get better you know so I had a blank canvas and that was nobody had been in the room and I felt that was quite sacred in a way mm -hmm. that that it hadn't been anything before and it was always just Kate's room and has been Kate's room since it still you is Kate's room. Kate's room yeah. Because even as you, you know, you call your uh, paintings colors by uh, colors of Kate. Yeah. Your your business, That's which, yeah, is, my which website, is, yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, and and obviously, you know, when you get the the studio, I, I think it's kind of like it gives you validation. Absolutely. Doesn't it? That yeah. this is what you are. Yeah. It's like having your office in your in your studio, and you go, "This is me. <laughs> yeah, this, this is who is I am." Yeah. Yeah. And that gives you another higher confidence to move forward with painting. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, rather absolutely. than it's not just a hobby. This is this is something serious. Yeah, now. and 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 my my nephew who's who's crazy into the woodwork. He's um he's he's uh just did, just got it or in secondary school going to uh, third year I think, and he's crazy about the the woodwork and stuff. But when he was younger, about three or four years ago, he actually introduced me to one of his friends, this is my auntie, the artist. Ooh, and that I was, like it. That was, that was the <laughs> best validation that I ever got because the innocence of him, he was just like, yeah, well, well you are. And I go, oh, well, maybe, maybe I am. Maybe I am. Sometimes it takes a while for us to validate, validate ourselves. I know, know, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I really like this actually, that tells about the fact that your aunt Helen was a founder member um, of the Merrion Square Artists Group at St. Stephen's Green. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be showing a, a, a photograph of your aunt with yourself here now. Yeah, I used to go down as um, a young girl with my mum on the bus um, and we'd get off and there she'd be on the railings with her, with her deck chair out and sun shining and all the railings along there and I just, like in, in my wildest dreams, I didn't think I'd ever be able to do that. You know, I just thought this was absolutely amazing growing These were for up. other people. Yeah, <laughs> you too, yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought it was amazing, an absolute amazing, yeah, that 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 she could do that. So I, you know, there was there was always art yeah. kind of in the air. It's like a sign you were getting then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> This yeah, is what you should yeah, be doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, and also tell us about your lo your art logo. Yeah, my logo um, for Colours of Kate, mm -hmm. um, it's, it symbolises both our freedoms, Kate's freedom from all the pain that she was in and the, the, like 
if anybody has had kids in, in Crumlin Hospital, it's those big bars, you know, you lift up the, 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 yes. the sides of the cot on the bars. And that was Kate for most of her life. Mm. You know, she was in, because she had a, a, a central line in and a peg line, she was always hooked up to things. So she, she couldn't get out and, and kind of walk around, you know, so. So it symbolized her freedom from the pain and it symbolizes my, my freedom from alcohol dependency mm -hmm. and freedom from that wallowing self-pity of grief that I, I, I found myself in when I drank because putting drink on top of the grief of child loss, you're just in a pit of despair, you know, and a pit of self-pity as well, you know, so, so that whole lo logo just it just came to me you know it's just a, it's just a symbol of both both our freedoms you know? and that's just incredible that yeah. both of you are part of the logo as yeah. well isn't it yeah, it's yeah. and, and, like and my husband that. mal has a has a nice tattoo of the of the logo on beautiful. his arm as well yeah. beautiful and what i actually think as well is it, it began to sell paints and originals like you would have never thought that no. you know at craft fair tell us a little bit a little bit about that yeah, I, I sold my first painting to a florist in Raffarnham. Um, that was the, the, the one with the hair called yes. Chance. Um, and I got a, a, a real boost from that, that, that somebody that I didn't know would actually want to buy one of my paintings. Um, and I was involved, at that stage, I was kind of involved in a group called Bite the Biscuit um, on Facebook. And uh, that's a group for, for creative people and it's helping them get themselves out there, you know, dealing with, you know, shops and, and, and stuff like that and markets and it's everybody kind of helps each other within the group. It's an absolutely amazing group. And um, I hooked up with a, with a couple of people networking and we had an exhibition in the Copper House in town. Um, that's going back about four or five years ago. Um, and then I just started applying to local markets and I sell limited edition prints um, that I get um, printed in the Copper House, they're, they're a printing uh, company as well. Um, and that that just went really, really well. Can you imagine that like really, the feeling really of well. that? It was just fantastic, yeah. And and then, as I say, a lot of word of mouth, there was craft shops. Um, there's a craft shop down in Wicklow I was in, um, Newtown Mount Kennedy, Fishers in Newtown Mount Kennedy. I had uh, paintings down there. Um, and a lot of the craft shops are great because what they do is that you go in and you do a stint behind the counter. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So you're in there and you're, you're doing maybe an afternoon. And so you're doing handovers with other people who are coming in to do their little stint. And then you get to know, well, why don't you ask, do you want to be in this shop? I'm in this other shop as well. So maybe I'll put you forward. So it's, it's a good really, community. It's a, the artist community is just fantastic. I do not see any, anybody kind of hiding stuff. They're always, everybody's kind of like very well open with, yeah, come with me, I'll, I'll show you how to do this. Or do you want to get into, do you want to get into this shop? Or do you want to go to this fair? And, you know, there's no, because everybody has their own. Individual arts. Exactly. Yeah, Nobody's creative. really, com you know, there's no competition because it's the, it's the buyer or the person who wants your art. Like they, they may think that's, they, it's not their taste at yes. all but it would be somebody else's taste. So, you know, it's, it's, it's everybody just helping each other. I think it's just fantastic. How do you feel, actually, because I don't know how I'd feel, how do you feel selling a painting, especially an original, whatever about a print? I love it. No, I, no but do I you don't, not go, no, do you I not feel even no, a bit sad? No, 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 no this, this. <laughs> or you keep the print, is it? I have the print. You see, yeah. I, I, yeah. I get everything scanned. Yes. I do get everything scanned unless it's very rarely that I don't get it scanned. I just like to keep them and mm. I have them. Um, and a lot of the paintings that I do, uh, you know, I can just ring, you know, for today, for example, I could, that, that sold, mm -hmm. that sold. So I could, uh, I just ring her up and I say, can I, can I just bring it along? I just want to show some of my work. Oh yeah, no problem, you know, which is great. And then we had we, another blessing that came into your family was Banjo the dog. Oh yeah, Banjo the dog. Yeah, we got <laughs> For you and Malta. You yeah, gotta tell me that we 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 love animals, love animals. Yeah. Um, and we have two cats, and uh, one of our cats sadly passed away, oh. and we'd been wanting a dog for a long time. We had been really, really wanting, but circumstances, you know, work and stuff like that didn't didn't um, kind of tally with what we wanted for a dog, which was you know someone there 
you know, all the time. And um, I was working, unfortunately, Mal um, got sick. He has osteoarthritis and um, he has an immune problem, problem with his spine as well. So with Mal being at home all the time, we said, great. Well, Let's get a dog. Yeah, I wanted a cat though as well. And, and I put up on my Instagram post, um, in 2020 saying I want a dog or I want a cat and Ma wants a dog and uh, what do you think we should get and I did a sketch of 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 a dog just off the top of my head and um, to, to just to show as a picture to go with the post and um, in two years later uh, we got rung up by My Little Horse Rescue um, down, in, down in Kildare saying that they had a little a four week old puppy and um, it wasn't doing well and would we would we take it in um, like it was just out of the blue. We hadn't got a dog at that stage. So says, yeah, we can have a little look. We bring him down, we see him. And we just fell absolutely in love with him. And um, you'll see the photograph. Was he like the dog that you drew? Exactly like what? the dog Stop. that we drew. Exactly like the, the dog. Chances of that. Absolutely. Another sign. We were yeah. meant to have him. Did we you even know that him. a dog existed like this dog? No, I you didn't. Just, like, just I, drew it. Yeah, just and we didn't pick Banjo out from anything he just he was just given to us he, you, they, 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 the rescue center they arrived down with the dog and just said here will you take this and that's what, what that's what he grew up to be the picture that i drew that is a great story I know, isn't it absolutely the picture you drew yeah, like yeah, wow yeah and my banjo yeah. That's Malcolm's department. He, oh, Malcolm. he, yeah, yeah. I can call. I, I, I name the cats. He names the dogs. Oh, what's the cat's <laughs> name? Um, we have Jake at the moment. Jake, yeah. Jake McSwish, because he's got a tail that is just Jake McSwish. Yeah, Jake McSwish. <laughs> yeah, we call him Jake. Yeah, yeah. that's a real stage name. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, stop! That's <laughs> so funny. Um, and we're actually coming, unfortunately, to the end of the yeah. interview here. It's. It's been a pleasure interviewing you. Oh, thanks very much. And it's been a pleasure mm -hmm. chatting to you before the interview as well. You're just, you're just wonderful people. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your inspiring um, story with us and our viewers at home, because obviously you'll make a difference to some people out there listening. You I definitely hope so. will. And I'd, I'd like to end actually on this because these are your words. You can expand on it if you wish. Um, your real purpose of your art is to show people that there can be recovery after child loss and alcohol dependency. And there's no doubt about it, you've proved that, Rachel. So do you want to expand a little bit before we finish up? I can actually show other people that there's, that there's hope after child loss and alcohol addiction. Yeah. Um, I use the art. I believe I was given the art as a, as a conduit, basically, for mm. this, that, that people can come up to me Talk to me at, um, you know, talk to me at fairs, talk to me if I'm in a shop, anywhere. And just hopefully that they, they can use the art as a way to get into the conversation that maybe they're having problems with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're finding grief too much um, and they're using, they're using alcohol as a crutch. And this is a way for them to come to me. They can come, they can buy a painting or they can talk to me about my art, just come to the, come to the studio and have a look at mm -hmm. the art. And a lot of the times when they're talking about the art, they might kind of start going, well, how did you give up the drink? You know, because I, 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 I make no bones about it, you know, about how, how dependent I was on alcohol mm -hmm. throughout the grief. Um, and if I can just help one or two people you know, with their alcohol dependency, you know, I could, I've done my job, you know, yes. I have, I also use it as a, as, as a kind of memories for people. People will buy paintings to give to people who've, who've been through child loss, just as a, as a symbol of hope. I recently sold a painting to um, a lady, uh, her daughter, Daisy, um, she has a, an Instagram page, Daisy's Days, um, and she saw, she bought it for her daughter. Unfortunately, her daughter passed away mm. about a week later. Um, but she has she has the painting. Yeah. She has the painting there to to remind her just of how long just love goes on for. Mm. You yeah. know. Well, it's been wonderful having you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Thank Keep you. shining in 2024. I will. I will. And inspiring people. Yeah. You know, to be their better self, which you are definitely doing. Thank you. Um, so just before we finish, can you tell us about your social media? Social media, I have Facebook, Colours of Kate. Yeah. I have Instagram, Colours of Kate. And I have a website, Colours of Kate. That's just wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wonderful having you here. Thank you. Thanks.
Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. What a wonderful woman um, Rachel is. Very, very inspiring, wonderful story. And obviously we're thinking about Kate here this evening as well. Um, on behalf of myself, Angel, and the crew here tonight, thank you so much. Good night. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Good night.